Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an AMD Sempron 3800 Plus. Released in October of 2006, this processor was the fastest in its class, which doesn't really account for much when all it's got to beat are other single core CPUs that feature a rather unimpressive catalogue of specs. Semprons have always been AMD's budget focused chips, and this was no exception. Based on the AM2 socket under the name Manila, this 64-bit 2.2GHz offering boasts a 256KB L2 cache, a 59 watt TDP, and support for DDR2 memory. It wasn't intended for heavy workloads then, and it certainly isn't in 2019. In fact, it probably would have run its course by mid-2007, but I'm being a bit mean. What's special about this one is that for the past 13 years it's remained unopened, an unusual occurrence. But today, that's going to change, and believe me when I say that a little bit of me is going to die inside. So let's have ourselves a good old fashioned unboxing video and then we'll be testing out what this thing can do. But I warn you, it really isn't much. First of all, let's take a look at the outside of the box. You can see this is a 64-bit CPU, and it came with a three-year limited warranty, which has expired, unfortunately, by now. Around the side, you can see the processor itself, and we should have the original heatsink fan included in this very large box. On the back here, you can see the original processor details. I like the way AMD were quite honest about their Sempron processors. They tell you straight off that these are for budget conscious customers and they don't try and make it sound like anything it's not. We've also got cool and quiet technology here with this processor which I believe was available from all of the Semprons starting with the 3200 plus and above which should keep that fan nice and quiet when it doesn't need to be running at full speed. And around the other side, we've just got a lovely little picture of the Sempron processor. So let's get it out of the box. So let's welcome the return of the monetization friendly knife and cut the box open. As you can see in here, we've got what should be the heat sink here, or just an empty piece of cardboard. We'll put that to the side. And now we'll remove the core components. First of all, starting with the processor. As you can see here, this is the Sempron itself encased within its plastic packaging and surrounded by another piece of cardboard. Very exciting stuff here on the channel. We'll put this aside for now and first unbox the heatsink. We'll also remove the original instructions here. Oh, and we get a nice little Sempron sticker as well, which we'll find a nice new place on my modern PC. I think I'll stick that right on the front of my desktop just to trick people into thinking I own the Sempron. Hilarious. Nothing else in the box here, so we'll put that to the side and crack open the heatsink fan. Undoing the box, which is harder than I anticipated, and we've got the original heatsink here with the original thermal paste intact. What I like about these old AMD heatsinks is how chunky they are. They're also quite quiet in operation. I know the modern AM4 Ryzen heatsinks also do a pretty good job of maintaining a combination of cool and quietness. But I found that they can get a little bit louder if you try and overclock. Fortunately, this isn't overclockable in the slightest. So this heatsink will do a very nice job of cooling this CPU. And here it is, the Sempron 3800 Plus in all of its glory. This part was also quite hard on me, having to tear open this little piece of cardboard here. I won't be repackaging this in a hurry. <laughs> this is probably one I'll keep and add to my collection. So here it is, the Sempron 3800. A fine example of one of AMD's budget-friendly CPUs from mid-last decade. I also couldn't help but wonder as to whether or not the original thermal paste had dried up considering it's been here so long and all I did was touch it with my finger, something I'd never usually recommend that you do but in this case it was nearly completely dried up. You can see that it was absolutely stuck on the bottom of this heatsink. It turned into a pretty solid powder at this point and I think if you put this on the CPU as it was in an attempt to keep it cool it would end up overheating within seconds. The thermal paste is pretty much part of the heatsink now. <laughs> but what can it do, I hear none of you ask? Well, let's find that out right now. So today does not mark the last time you'll see this Sempron as I plan to put it in 
a build that's better suited to the time using all older components. So in this one I'll give you a little bit of a sneak preview regarding the performance of this chip when it comes to games. Forgive me as there's no frame rate counter on the screen so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about each individual game's performance starting with Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. This is an older game released in about 2005 on PC and as such it will run at close to 30 frames per second albeit with the lowest settings. Now you may remember Gun this is a port from the PS2 version of the game and hence it runs at a locked 30 FPS which the Sempron is able to achieve. I'm not going to say easily because there are a few drops here. Now I paired it with a 9800 GT, an older card. I also had to install Windows 7 in order to test all of today's games because I think although Windows 10 might run with the Sempron 3800 Plus I didn't want to take the chance so I just installed a fresh copy of Windows 7 and reinstall my games that way. Now Half-Life 2 is so easy to run these days that you can turn the settings down low enough and you should be able to see close to 60 frames per second like we were doing here albeit with a pretty low resolution. The 9800 GT is also helping but the processor is maxing out at 100% most of the time. Last but not least, for now we have Modern Warfare 2. This will run anywhere between 15 and 30 FPS. It does have a few sound issues, i.e. the audio isn't always synced up to what's going on on screen. So it can be off-putting, particularly if you're playing a special ops mission like I am here. All in all, well the Sempron certainly will struggle and you won't be able to see decent performance in many games, even older ones. And for now, I guess that's all you can really say. I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing of the Sempron 3800 Plus. Leave a like on it if you did. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you still have this processor in your system and how it runs for you when it comes to playing games. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.